Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. We're once again checking out the newest patch for SFO Grimhammer which is due to release soon, The Great Plan. With the vanilla legendary lords done and dusted, now we can start looking towards the others, and we're going to start that off with a personal favourite, Nakai the Wanderer. You see, obviously this character has the very different style of play, as he's focused around being a horde. Not only that, but he's a professional babysitter too. Nakai's different style of campaign makes him incredibly unique, and obviously needs a little bit of help, as hordes aren't really in the best place at the moment. So let's check out how the new patch changes changes his gameplay. Nakai's special faction trait is known as the Wanderer, which has the following benefits. Nakai's Horde unlocks units while other Hordes use global recruitment to get access to them. Nakai's vassals occupy the settlements conquered. The more settlements controlled come with increasing rewards. Recruit rank plus 5 for Croxigor Ancients and ambush defense chance plus 25%. How a Croxigor of that size is able to ambush anyone is beyond me, but hey, that's actually legitimate law, so yeah. Nakai's own unique personal trait first spawn has the following benefits. Melee Defense plus 10 for Croxagore and Sacred Croxagore units for Lord's Army. Recruitment cost minus 50% for Croxagore and Sacred Croxagore units for Lord's Army. And finally, unit experience gain per turn plus 100 for all armies faction wide. Of course, it's a very good bonus, especially once you start the ball rolling with making more and more armies. So of course, Nakai has his own unique Horde-inspired technology tree, and that has actually stayed very much the same. However, a new branch has been added in specifically for the Great Plan patch. A grand majority of these new technologies focus around Nakai himself, further empowering him and making him an absolute apex predator, with loads and buffs and some really thematic stuff to make him appear in defense in other battles. Think of him as the Green Knight, but how the Green Knight should have actually been implemented in vanilla. There's also some other stuff which focuses around boosting up the capabilities of Croxigors too, Keep in mind that with this specific technology tree, you're going to also need alignment resource. One thing to increase Nakai's quality of life is able to use its own version of the Underway. This is very good, especially for the Mortal Empires campaign as you start off in Albion and then you have to traverse through Norska, which is loads of mountainous terrain. It's also very useful in the Eye of the Vortex as Lustria also suffers from the same terrain issues as Norska does and let's be very, very honest, it's something that kind of puts you back from a horde faction that doesn't really get to build. You're going to be stuck moving around a lot and that terrain does become a bit of an issue. There are different ways of gaining the alignment resource which is going to be very much needed throughout your campaign. One common way of getting it is actually by building up your hordes. The main building of your horde tree will be able to give you a steady amount of alignment as you progress through your campaign, with the final building giving you 5 alignment per turn. 5 alignment per turn is pretty steady and and more or less online with every single Lizardman faction with their own unique alignment mechanics. Another way to gain a decent amount of alignment per turn is by attacking settlements, and then turning these settlements into temples. Each temple will provide you with one alignment per turn, so you've got a decent amount of ways to actually gain this resource, and it's not going to take too long considering that Nakai is quite an aggressive faction by nature. One thing that you'll also notice is that the Defenders of the Great Plan, aka your vassals, are completely sentient. This is something which is desperately needed, especially for this faction, as you can't be affording to play babysitter all the time with Nakai or any of your other forces, and let's be very honest, in general sense, a vassal doesn't really do much. They generally declare war on the enemies that you have and won't really act by themselves. Keep in mind, however, that you might need to keep an eye on them if you declare war on a big faction, as there are some cases that they will be attacked and they won't be able to defend themselves. This depends, obviously, on how much cash they have to be able to build further armies, and you will need to be able to supply them sometimes. Something that I've noted, at least from my playthroughs, is that the enemy factions will also directly aim for them if they can too, as a vassal faction is usually a little weaker than the player faction anyway, so they will need to be defended ever so slightly every now and then if they can't build up their armies. The temples of the old ones have been changed in terms of buffs. The green line itself will focus around different administrative stuff, with the bonuses being as follows, campaign movement range plus 20% for armies, protection of Quetzal ability upgraded, 
constant casualty replenishment plus 10%, Horde growth plus 5, and income from post-battle loot plus 25%. The Red Temples Itzel now has the following bonuses. Beasts of Itzel ability upgraded, melee defense plus 5, vigor loss reduction minus 20%, recruitment rank plus 2 for all units, and melee and missile weapon damage plus 10%. This is the one that I went for personally as I was in a lot of fights constantly throughout Norska, and I wanted that little bit of an extra edge. And finally, the blue temples are focused around magic, and the following bonuses can be acquired. Magic item drop chance plus 50%, winds of magic power reserve plus 25, magic resistance 10% for all units, storm of Halanka ability upgraded, which obviously is a rather powerful vortex, and finally, winds of magic cost minus 20% for lore of life, heavens, fire, light, beasts, and high magic. This obviously favours a lot of people who prefer magic, and is incredibly useful, especially with that Winds of Magic cost reduction, but it very much depends on your playstyle. I myself prefer the red one, and then I'd started going around from both, it just really depends. Of course, each of the different temples will also have different bonuses, different units, and so on that you can acquire, so it's very much dependent on your playstyle. That, of course, is tied to another resource which you'll naturally gain for your campaign, but that's gained in the same manner as the vanilla playthroughs, so don't you worry about that, nothing is radically changing over there. But with all that being said, these are the changes coming to Nakai in the SFO Grimhammer patch, The Great Plan. It's not radically changing anything, but rather enhancing his already established campaign playstyle. Tomorrow we'll be back looking over some other changes to other legendary lords for the Lizardmen. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like, or even subscribing to the channel, as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms, such as Facebook, Instagram, and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games, where you could buy loads of hobby-based products, not just Warhammer, for 10-25% to off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code, which is also in the description, supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to our higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing, and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel's been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that, my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very, very soon. Have a good day.